Welcome to Cowboy Boys Podcast Season 2 Episode I don't know if I'm going to do one and restart the count or just keep I'll probably keep doing the numbers with me first you official You don't have the numbers memorized? I don't have the numbers memorized. I should start over. Just do n- number 1. I should restart every 10 uh episodes just do a new season so i can remember but joining me a first first official guest for the new season nate garcia you don't let your hair on fire <laughs> um welcome to the podcast uh nate garcia prolific indie comic book artist would you say you're artist or writer i don't know how indie comics work there's I'm, like a word f- there's like a word for it, a cartoonist because I, I don't know, if, when I think of cartoonists, I think of like animated cartoons, but that also makes sense. Yeah, a lot of people who make comics will, will think that a cartoonist is a derogatory kind of term, but car- is it- cartoonist is just like, that's like Charles Schultz was a cartoonist, Jack Kirby was a cartoonist, it's just like the the uh, end-all, be-all term for someone who writes and draws comics at the same time. Do you, because I know a lot of stand-up comics are like, they look down on uh, improv comedians. Oh yeah, like that's... they're like improv, so it, and it it kind of does. But there's some improv that's really good, obviously. But is that like our do comic book artists be like you're you've sold out, man? You're doing you're doing animation. Well, I will say actually the equivalent analogy of like stand up comedians versus improv is like say like a cartoonist who writes and draws their own material versus somebody who like just draws like character design for steven universe or something just like an empty soulless version of what those cal they do yeah because like i imagine stand-up comedians look down on improv comedians because they're not working on material that it has to like respond with a crowd's uh, approval or disapproval i guess the real analogy would be uh alt comedy versus normal like is improv like alt comedy kind of not really it's just like a different genre but alt comedians are like They'll do, they won't do like normal stand up, like, oh, here's my, I'm talking on a stage and I'm going to do a setup and a joke where all comedy will be something weird. Uh-huh. It'll be, and it's, it is usually like in a, like a grungy like venue on a stage and not like in a comedy club usually. So that those people, I'm saying it's kind of like they kind of like don't, they look at each other where they're like, you're not doing it for real, man. And it's like, okay, but I'm getting money. Yeah. Which I know it's, it but is. It's not about the money. It's about if you're a true stand up comedian, I'd imagine like. You can do both, but you can make a lot of money selling out, which I respect sometimes. Yeah, I see, I've seen some alt, alt comedy. Sometimes, you know, in uh, especially in New York, there'll be like comic book readings where it's like three people are reading a comic, two people are reading uh, storyboards for an animation where they narrate over it and they don't actually write any comics material. And then they're like drunk and then they like they like skip a slide and they're just like, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I skipped it. And everybody's laughing. And they they like because it's laugh. just like genuine. Well, no, but it's just like it's or, it's it's uh they're, they're just like slacking off. They're like, um, I don't know. It, it it's like a co- like a college uh, project or something. Are you them. saying it's lazy? Yeah, a little bit lazy. Okay, so that I have the same thing sometimes because nothing offends me on stage. Like, no, you can make fun of Jesus or my mom yeah. or like you can make fun of me. I love that. You can do the only thing because people get offended by comedy if it affects the thing that they like. And the thing that I hate is when someone goes up and they do bad jokes, like lazy jokes. That's when I get offended. And I'm like, I want to like, I want to be like, what the, you're dis- disrespected. And, but I also, I'm like, I, I get it. I'm also lazy. And so I, I would never heckle someone that in that manner. But. Yeah. No, then we're the same then because a lot of these people they're like it's extremely lazy. They're taking screenshots from an animation that's first of all not even moving. It's storyboards to then make them move, but they don't want to go through all the trouble of that and it's then hard. they'll just like they'll just narrate over it and then when it, and then like they'll like add anecdotal things about when they made it that's part that's supposed to be funny it's like just tell the story you know but then there's also like comedians who go on there and they try to tell jokes but you could tell they're like they don't have a lot of material so they're just like so i'm just gonna stand here until everybody tells me to get off like kind of <laughs> i'm sure happens. you've seen that's, that that's annoying do you know i my first um venture into like anything funny was comics when I was like oh, wow. fourteen, I started I started a web comic, which is lazy. A lot of web comics are like copy and paste the phrase, like Homestuck or something. 
Not like Homestuck, but I do remember Homestuck. I remember when it was uh, Typewriter Detective or something, his first thing. Back like when the, the web comics I used to read, the main one uh, was a guy in Utah who actually did an Extra Life comic. Shout out Scott Johnson. I don't know. I think he's still doing it. I would read VG Cats. Whoa. Uh, Control All Delete. I don't know if that's still going. It's uh, a great name. It's it. That's a very infamous. People hated him because of his lazy art style and hack jokes. But, uh, but I would read it all because I'm like 14 on the internet. And so I'm like, I'm going to start drawing my own comics. And I, they were so bad. They were really just like almost like Simpson-esque, like googly eyes and like just really basic cartoons of like, I obviously me, I drew me all cool and I would like draw my crush and be like, hey, what's <laughs> up? And I would draw like, I think I had designed like a, a, a scale, like a Grim Reaper character wearing a hoodie, which is like, oh, we've seen that a thousand times. This it's is the, great. Wait, how old are you when you're doing this? I was 14. And so what happened is I was wow. uploading them to my website, which I still own, minimac.com was and then this is a i actually mini mac like imac yeah exactly like mini mac.com and i uh what happened is let's see i pulled up the article actually uh back in two th sunday march 6th 2005 do you know what something awful is no something awful is an old they're kind of like a 4chan or like a kiwi farms oh so it's a website yeah it's a website wow sorry something awful is like an old early 2000s website a lot of racism probably yeah but like it's it's uh for comedic like it's edgelord shit yeah 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 okay they, they probably are racist but they're trying to like ah i'm yeah. shocking and people like, are like original pepe the frog which by the way pepe the frog's creator matt fury was a cartoonist and he made the the boys club comic which yeah. is just an indie alt comic like these and that but just then blew up it just became a meme and then well it became part of the like zeitgeist and like yeah. his character he lost it he lost it but to get well, back he's to a millionaire off nfts now good yeah, for him i still you know? see him selling out nfts which is like hell yeah dude it's because the internet took your thing yes why, why not profit off it but if there's anybody that can it's him and, and god bless him for it yeah so uh i something awful found my shitty web comic when i was four let's see it says 2005 Holy yeah i'd be shit. i'd be 14 and they, they wrote like a little article about it oh took my like, god took pictures i'll link the article uh in the in the youtube comments so this wow. is like grown grown men grown incels yeah Finding my web, and they had like an awful website of the day. Incels of the internet in 2005. Yeah, that's, that's what a the, new kind. No, that's that's what the original internet was. Yeah, was See, I was born incels. in 2002. Damn, so I was getting I was getting doxxed when you were three years old. That's cr that's literally <laughs> crazy, man. But so I had uh, I had like my website with my comics, and I had like a forum. I was just, just copying what other people would do. Yeah, and. Uh, because that, that was every, every web comic had their own forum. There was no like Facebook yet. There was no Twitter. There was no social media. It was just all these forums like, oh, I like this. And you'd hang out. And uh, my forums, which was literally like me and my friends, like 20 people. Uh, one day I wake up and it had like 60,000 posts. Wow. And I start clicking and it's all gore, porn, ra like wow. swastika, everything. And I'm like, oh, shit. And so I'm like, well, I guess I shut down. I have to delete the forums. I can't. Oh, why didn't you just leave them up? I, I, was, too, I was like, <laughs> I'm 14. What do I? I don't know. I don't know how a website. How to bear, I barely know how to build a website. I barely like. No, so I'm like, I, I don't want to go through and like delete all the new stuff. I just deleted the forums. Wow. And then I like eventually lost interest and stopped doing my webcom. I wish I had them. They're all in, in my dad's house in like a folder. So you're like you're like a uh, an ex cartoonist who's a victim of uh, immediate fame. It, I wouldn't say fame because I didn't get sixty thousand and they're, they're well, posting all this spam. stuff. It was all yeah, spam. Like, it was like hackers. It was probably like three guys spamming using bots. But it's really interesting because I'm like when I see someone uh, getting a ton of hate online, I'm like, that's easy. That's yeah. Easy. Just just go ignore it. Ignore so, it for a little. So bit. how wait? So how old are you? Are you technically a millennial? Uh yes. Hold on. Oh Our yeah. Cat is clawing at your stuff. Get out of oh, here. I forgot I had stuff. Yeah, there. Just, just grab your bag. The um so so you're you're a mil uh, millennial so you are the most equipped to handle the trappings of the internet in every facet because you've lived it, through it to ch you've like had the worst of it to start and then now everything else is kind of like frosting yeah. on the cake. Yeah, I remember before like before the internet existed. Yeah, that like, wow. Barely like back when I was like a kid. Uh, I think we got a computer. 
probably when I was somewhere around 10 or 11, because my dad was like into, he had like an IT job back then doing internet stuff. Wow. So I randomly, that's why I had a website, because my dad knew how to do that. I'm like, how do you do this? And he's like, here's how you do it. I just took an interest to hit. But yeah, like I remember seeing the internet slowly evolve and it was better back then. It was yeah, better. Well, it was better back then. <laughs> I bet it was more earnest back then. Like now there's like five different like um, layers to what anyone is saying on the internet if it's like typed out or on a video. I know. I've like poisoned my brain because I think everything is, nothing is sincere. Yeah. I, I'll see like someone doing like a, someone having like a, a fit online and I'm like, I think they're doing, I think they're, they're, they're chasing clout by saying that. And I'm, I can't believe any, I'm poisoned, but also I am, I feel like I am the most equipped because I'm online all day. I'm one of the most online people and I don't think it affects, it affects me negatively, but I don't feel like it, it doesn't stress me out. Yeah. So sometimes I'll reference stuff and people are like, what? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was talking to a comic just the other day about, uh, Tim and Eric. Oh yes, and he's he's also he's like twenty two, and he's like what? And I'm like, oh man, I'm such an old. I'm not a millennial. I'm a boomer. People with cool parents <laughs> know about Tim and Eric if they um were if they're my age, but like my parents never showed me that. I know about my friends who have younger parents who showed them that. Tim Heidecker is actually from where I'm from, Allentown, nice. Lehigh Valley. So, yeah, that's I I. I I dipped my toe into the the cartooning world. Wow, way back when. Do you, do you know the, uh, this cartoonist Daniel Klaus? He's like the most famous cartoon, like like no. like I say famous, but like academic literary library. Yeah, like, then I don't know him. Uh, he he made this book called Ghost World. Uh, but, oh, I I know Ghost World. Yeah, okay, there only you go. from the movie. Yeah, see, that's why, that's why I say most famous because it's like he, people outside of comics know the work. But he, I, I went to dinner with him one time in Philadelphia, and he was like telling me about his daughter and like the the internet, and he was like. I just don't understand. It's just a picture of Shrek. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I realized like the, the, the post irony of my generation's like what they find funny. It, what I find funny is just like, so, cause like even like just a picture of Shrek is supposed to be funny because it used to be funny and it's stupid and it's even more stupid to bring it up now. Cause more time has passed from when it was originally not stupid. That's what I gathered. And that's kind of explains like internet, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you're explaining like a very moment in time of internet when Shrek meme was the biggest. Yeah, I see a Shrek meme now, and I'm like, oh, that's some old guy. Yeah, yeah. trying to stay relevant. Shrek hasn't been popular for well, five years, or like Shrek Fest. That's why. That's why it's kind of come back because it's just it so old, and stupid, stupid and old. Yeah, but see, this is just the, the, this conversation doesn't even make any sense. It's just like this is the just the new just the new world. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Being how old are you? Twenty one. So you're twenty one. I can't imagine like being born into the internet. I have no or being born after nine eleven. You know, to me, it's a myth. I've heard that. I heard uh, there was some teacher posting online who was like, I, I was a he's like a substitute teacher and he was teaching a class and he mentioned nine eleven and the kids were like like some fourth grade class. And the kids were like, what do you mean 9-11? Like the meme? And he's like, no, like the real thing that happened. All these fourth graders, were lo <laughs> they were losing their mind. <laughs> like the meme. Because they thought, they didn't know that 9-11 actually happened. Oh, Jesus. He, they, they only knew it from memes. And so he, he said his entire class erupted because they had no idea that it actually was a real thing. You gotta, we got to like pretend. Okay, so everybody in the news agencies, they've got to make it seem like... 9-11's happening right now just so that the, this new generation can like see it objectively and, and believe it again. That's the only way they'll believe it is if they shut down their school just like in 2001 and they make they it seem like it just happened. They didn't shut down schools here. I went to school. I, I woke up in the morning. What? And my dad actually, it was weird because my dad woke me up early. In New York, they didn't shut down no, their school? No, I lived in Utah oh, stupid at the time. Right. <laughs> so I've only lived in New York for the past five years. They did <laughs> oh. shut down schools here. Oh. I don't know how far east. I don't know if like maybe some schools in New Jersey, probably on the east coast. But like in Utah, uh, because it was like still 6 a.m. there in the time zone, my dad woke me up an hour early. He's like, hey, go check out what's going on the TV. My, yeah, my dad's always been like weirdly just 
this is this is what life is like not hiding anything from me that's very good to have though um yeah he was like yeah i'm watching starship troopers they're showering together <laughs> like i don't know if it's the right thing to do because then you create someone like me but but you're great mac well i don't i think some people it might corrupt poorly but yeah he gave me internet like way too young at 10 which i that's probably a good age maybe 10 uh, well my exposure to the internet was like uh re- really early but it was censored so like my dad would let me go on google images and i would just my 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 uh most fun time would be like seven years old look up incredible hulk and then i just see a million pictures of the incredible hulk and i look up incredible hulk real and then i see all these pictures i'm like no way which one is the real one or then i would look up uh i look up spider-man real like the same thing and 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 uh that was like as good as it got for me and then i started to see some real dark shit on the interwebs well, do you remember you don't have to share if it's- yeah well i was on i was on the, uh, this website movie star planet do you remember movie star planet no. that's like young children hello are you allergic to cats yeah don't touch his butt he'll bite you but he'll just oh. sit, he'll just sit there oh, you're allergic wow. is he is he trained to only bite Wait. people that aren't f-ing him in the ass yeah okay <laughs> he, he's really def- you said you are allergic oh yeah yeah but it's like if i start touching him okay Ch- but uh if he if he starts sneezing we'll we'll kick him out but he'll just sit there <laughs> no I'll, I'll i'll survive this uh i used to i used to be on this website called movie star planet which was just like it was like a club penguin offshoot it's like a weird <laughs> game where you go and you live like an alternative alternative life in a different world and this was a world where everybody was a movie star and you could go to hollywood and you can go to the clubs you can go to the restaurants and i had a girlfriend on there named <laughs> ella forever 12 yeah, when i a, was nine that was a 30 year old guy <laughs> yeah well dude I was, man, I was in love with her she had the best cgi blonde hair and then was this a 3d like web game no it was it was 2d they looked okay. like snapchat bitmojis before they turned them 3d yeah do you know? Do you remember when they were two D? Yeah, yeah. I remember they, everything they, yeah, okay. from the old internet. Because they, they. I don't know when it. They just changed them to three D, and now I go on Snapchat every now and again, and I see. By the way, and I shouldn't be on there because it's yeah, you're so old dead. Now. You're twenty one. It's, it's so dead, man. And you see the people that are still on there, and they're just like, like, like uh, drinks with the bitches, and it's like, dude, you guys are still doing this, like. <laughs> but they're they're like. This girl, Ella Forever 12. You still remember her, your, your first online girlfriend. And she would tell me, she's like, she's like, it's crazy over here in Denmark. I just went to Golden Corral in Denmark. <laughs> yeah, they did. that was a guy in Florida. Yeah. That was a 30-year-old man in Florida who just went to Golden Corral. Yeah, I don't know. And then I was, you know, I was very, I was, then she broke up with me in Movie Star Planet. Damn. And at nine, at nine years old, it's like, I I had to feel these feelings like, <laughs> and they're 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 so fake and so not even real. But I guess you they're know, real to you prepares you prepares you for real life, I suppose. But it was so strange. It'll prepare you for getting broken up with your AI girlfriend when not the, all the AI girls on the phones now. Yeah, that's a whole new. thing. Those ones creep me out. <laughs> my my dad was going through a, a split up with my mother at the time, and when I was you were just, nine. Yeah, uh-huh. while I was on Movie Star Planet, so my dad would play all this sad music in the car, like <laughs> I keep bleeding. Love, keep bleeding, <laughs> and he's crying to the to the video or to the music, and then I'm I'm looking at the window, kind of crying too about Ella Forever Twelve in Denmark. <laughs> you're just you're like, man, me and my dad. Yeah, it's I, know exa- I know exactly how he feels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just like me, but maybe I'm a little bit worse off. <laughs> it's but he had love and lost that. I didn't even I didn't even get to meet her. Yeah, but of course I never talked about this. This is all. It's all water under the Denmark Bridge. <laughs> yeah. um, how did you? Uh, so wait, did you? How did you start like drawing comic? Like, what was that first thing? Oh, so I I just been drawing ever since I could hold a pencil. I've been drawing. So my mom told me, but I, I had this teacher in the first grade who was like twenty four, and she was t- talking about all of the drama with her roommates and her lovers and ex lovers and um, teachers love spilling their personal lives onto like children. I mean, wouldn't you? Because this is pre-internet well, children too. Like, none of the kids in my class in 2007 had any kind of like uh, internet access or social media. Yeah. So, like, she's like telling all this stuff to to no consequence, and and, and she's kind of like, um, you know, it's cathartic for her. And I guess like the ego of a 20-something year old when it's like when their lives are like immortalized in some way. I'm sure that really helped her. You mean the teachers like I. I'm important. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, they are. What I did was I made comics about every thing she told us. Really? And I would come to school the next day with a comic. So about, you're like 14, 
13, 14 drawing like comics about adult relationships. Well, no, this was when I was in, this was in 2008. So I was in first grade. Oh, what? Yeah. 2007, 2008. So when you, I started making comics. You had no choice but to draw indie comics. It was thrust yeah. upon you. Yeah. I, I should have brought them. <laughs> she actually just sent me them. Um, cause oh, you still talk to her? Yeah. Yeah. I, she, dude, I used to go to her house, man. She showed me Alf. Like, you know Alf? Of course you know Alf. Yeah, I know Alf. It's my favorite show of all time, man. Really? The funniest show ever. What does it stand for? Alien Life Form? Alien Life Form, yeah. There's this episode where... Um, Wait, was she hot? Uh, uh, I could never answer this. <laughs> She's my first it. grade teacher, you, you know? You didn't do anything. When did you go over to her house? Um, she, Well, I went to her house when... Uh, How old were you? I was, 2008, I don't know. Two, when I was born? 2002, 7, 6, wait, 8, 7. I was 6 years old. 6 and 7. And so I was making these comics. It's just like my mom wanted to go see the Christian band Michael W. Smith live in concert with my dad to to um for for some romantic bliss, and and oh, so she, she would drop like, me off she there. She babysit. Yeah, she'd babysit me. We'd watch yeah. Alf. I'd fall asleep. I remember falling asleep a lot. Maybe she drugged me. Maybe. But uh, all of these, I made like a hundred books, and these were like full color comics. You know, panels, speech bubbles, full color, and uh, they they were all. It, it became very uh, abstract and, and obsessive. So it would start off like. Oh, my boyfriend's dog peed on my dad, and now I can't see my boyfriend. And then it would turn into like I made up animals for her to date after the boyfriend. And then there was like the adventures of Mr. Vanka and Stuart the cat. <laughs> but then they would like, like Stuart would get really fat, and then she would take him to a boat and throw him to a shark. I mean, they would get really dark, even darker than that, and and strange. Yeah, because you're when you're a kid, all all my comics were like. Uh, I think I did do. I drew like a, a superhero called like the Claw, and I would draw. <laughs> I would draw. He was like Batman, but he killed people. Yeah, and then I would like. I would draw obviously like the hundreds of stickman battles. Well, they all have guns and they're all killing each other because it's violent. Just, it's just like it's it's fun to draw that when yeah. you're a kid. It's like oh cool. Well, a you, know, you don't have a big... phone to look up a uh, mass sh- mass shooting compilation on YouTube. Or... Is that what kids are looking up now? Kids these days are looking up like. Uh, do you know this website called the Gauntlet? No, is that? Oh, like, it's, I, think it's, I think it's called Run the Gauntlet, where you can go oh, and see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've seen this? It's, I, I do know. It's just like all the most shocking videos. Yeah, like you can see a baby get thrown into a train track and die. You could see a woman mm. try to do a magic trick in a bathtub and drown. You could see a man cut his arm off or kill a dog. All, all the good stuff for the internet for the kids. That's what I want, that's what we would do. It would be like Homestar Runner. And then we would show like uh, happy tree friends to like some girl. Oh, and just, like, great. They, 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 like, ah, no. It's, yeah, kid, don't. I think there should be two internets. <laughs> I think there should be like. Like I don't, Netflix where they got the kids version of Netflix? No, yeah, like a YouTube kids or whatever. I don't think e- either no internet for anyone under the age of 18. Wow. I'm, I'm like dead serious. Or like have a really like YouTube kids internet for everyone 18. Then once you turn 18, now you can be on the adult internet because then it allows everyone to be like, this is the internet. We This is just how it is. It's bad. Protect yourself. Yeah. Know what's up. But like it always feels weird when you're like, when there are. I think it would also help with all the, like the Mr. Beastification and all that shitty like. Oh, that's just made for the kids. Yeah. Dopamine in the worst way. I hate, I hate that guy. Yeah, I hate that you can like make money off of the dumbest content and I have to like compete against that. Well, so it's, it's not it's like, fair because the, when the internet came out, it was like, well, came out. It's a, it's a opposing television and all this stuff. And now you're on the same Well, it's like destroyed. Field. But I think it was back then why, why I like the old internet is it was hard to get on. So if it because it's hard, remember when like tw- tw- even Twitter used to be like difficult to like understand, uh, to like retweet someone. You had to like type in their username and like retweet it where and like do this format and syntax. And so I like uh, websites that are sli- like take a slight learning curve. Yeah. Because if the easier a website is like Facebook, it's the low the dumbest person can Absolutely. be like, I don't think I don't think nine eleven happened. I Send. think I think yeah. And so then it it. it forces that of dumb opinion and everyone reads it and we're like oh man and it all appeals to the lowest who the most views so it's all this hate engagement and all this the dumbest like although i do get sucked into like a jar full of marbles being pushed down the stairs and exploding on balloons oh that stuff God. or like uh the the sl- what is the the asmr the slow hydraulic press stuff that like that like gets me and i'm like i'm getting sucked in i need to i need to go watch some science channel learn something mm, that so shit, that's that shit's what, for babies man yeah i know and i'm still a, i still have baby brain deep down in there 
Yeah. You just, you just you just grow new layers, and then you become more of an adult. So I think. Don't you love when so you're talking about something with about like it, like uh, how stupid social media is? Someone and they're just like, yeah, I fucking, I fucking hate it. It's just like all like these hot girls like bouncing their ass around. Like I can't, it's so so stupid. Yeah. It's like, but then you, the algorithm's made for you, yeah. son. That's when people it's are like, for you. When people are like, there's too many teenage women yeah, on my yeah. algorithm. I'm like. <laughs> interesting is I, it, you just revealed you something about yourself i know I, I, mine is mine is nothing but retarded guys in the that's south that's good see you're a good person <laughs> i remember when i created our our cowboy boys tiktok go follow it everybody i post clips there TikTok. i created i created the to- cowboy boys tiktok on a on my android phone my spare and it like it's not connected to anything no like it's a blank uh, phone there was no none of my old stuff so it's a fresh new phone it's not connected and i started swiping to just to see what the algorithm was it was nothing but like it thought i lived in india and it like it was nothing but like weird indian tiktoks and i'm like that's how you get back on <laughs> that's the of, real internet man <laughs> yeah holy macro but, well that's like the basic like all right let's figure out if, if it has no information to glean, yes. it just defaults you to India because I'm like, well, that's where the most people are, so let's roll the dice and see. Wow. It was super. It was, that, does it have to do where the Android is built? Maybe. I maybe. don't even know where they're built. Maybe that says a lot about I me. I think uh, Android is like the most popular phone format in the rest of the world. iPhone is America only. And I think Japan. Wow. Yeah, you should test it out and see what, it, what would happen if you just do a blank iPhone. I've always wondered that if, like, my, if I just had like a blank phone... I didn't tell it where my location was or anything connected social media wise or any email or anything or bank accounts. They would have to just give me the real internet. Yeah, it's Indian ladies dancing. Wow. It's like not sexual, but it is. It really, it's super like, I was swiping. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is, I don't know what to feel. I don't hate it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's meant for a, a certain kind of libido that you're not privy to. Mm-hmm. The the baby girl looking. I'm, I'm I need baby girls right now. Wow. <laughs> um, so you're drawing comics of oh, your yes. teacher's life. Yeah, of my teacher's life, and I, I made so many, and they became more fictionalized and insane. And as a child, this is almost you could have gone down a Christian path if the wrong, if you were if you were more autistic or <laughs> had like a worse <laughs> home upbringing. Because he like the, I wonder how many people like draw like just comma it's such a like accessible easy no i'll tell you real real easy it's people that don't have any friends because like all of my (laughs) friends were very well all the people i shouldn't say friends all the people in my school they would just you know they just thought it was really weird man like they literally told me like my 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 Every single, because I would move a lot, and um, oh, okay. every single new school, they would just, it would like take two weeks, and then I'm just like, they would like categorize me as like, though, though he's like weird. Because I was just drawing these comics, because you know, it's a very antisocial like practice. And so I didn't have many friends in the school, and um, my teacher was actually my oh, my only friend. And in the, in the recess, I was hanging out with the adult teachers, which is kind of like, I feel like, that's like a beginning of a serial killer story. A bit. I, I had a lot of that. I was, yeah. I was really friendly with teachers. Yeah. I would like to the point where I'm failing their class and I was still mm-hmm. buddies. They're like, come on, you got to try. And I'm like, that's great. I was wow. just like, I was always just talking to them. Like, that's how, how I would get out of trouble. Yeah. Is I would redirect the conversation. I would just talk to them like normal people. <laughs> Cause it is like kids talk to each other, like talk to teachers, like, you, I'm, uh, you're the authority. And I'd be like, hey, what's, there was one teacher. Um, when I went to, I would think I was in the eleventh grade. No, it was tenth grade. I went to this one high school, Granite High, and it was he was the math teacher. It was like a really he was the president. He was like he ran the chess club. He was a math teacher. Like I, what was it? It was probably calculus. I was failing his class. I didn't do any work. Wow. So he sat me in the front seat of the class, and I would just talk to him. Like, like I, I wish I could remember his name, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, st- I'm gonna make up a name. I was like, uh, I would like, Mr. Shelby, what's going on in your life right now? Like, what's, what's happening with you? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. I'm like, like, and I would just slowly beat him down to where I was. I found out this guy was like, I don't know. There's this girl I've been thinking about asking out. Well, and, and he told you this. Yeah, he told me that because I'm talking to him. I'm just like, I don't want to work. Yeah, I would always just try and talk to teachers for about anything but school, and so. I found out that he was like, "There's this girl." I'm like, "You should, you should ask her out. <laughs> you should." You're giving him advice, and I'm I'm just talking out of my ass, like yeah. giving him the most generic, like "Go for it, man," which is sometimes what we all need to hear. Is the most generic advice works because it's 
It's just, you just need to do, not do nothing. So he's like, I don't know why, but he's like, all right, maybe, yeah, yeah. I, like, I gave him encouragement. And then he started dating her. And then, like, I went off. But then I found out, like, two years later, he, like, contacted me. And he's like, hey, I'm married. Wow, I got, two years later, what, when you're 11 years old? Or, like, a couple, I don't remember. But <laughs> they it, like, got married, he, that's great. Maybe they're yeah, divorced right now. Maybe, but that's it was really funny. Ending. I'm like, oh, man. I say a lot of things and I've always worry about like the consequences. Mm. Like I, but it is, I don't, I don't worry about it. I just don't care. I'm like, it is interesting seeing the butterfly effect of like putting out a podcast, giving people advice, being like, I, Hey, this is what I would do, but it's your life. <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ. So it is funny. Like that's how I would, I understand talking to teachers and befriending them. That makes they me happy people. to hear. Cause you know, you turned out all right and I turned out all right. Mm, I right. Mean, we're both weirdos, but <laughs> it's not, I would prefer <laughs> we didn't that. Turn out all right. I mean, I would prefer that to not being a weirdo. There's a bad type of weirdo. Yeah. I think you can be, you can be a positive weirdo. The, um, the, the, the talking to the teachers thing was really nice. But then from, from there it just became where, the teacher was telling this whole class her life, and then she was just telling me her life after that. Oh, no. And then I was just making these books, making these books, and um, then uh, I just I started to know like the inner workings of all the other teachers, and I would put them in the comic too. And would then these teachers are like, these teachers are like seeing the comics, like, like, well, how do you know about this and stuff? Oh, and shit. Like, but, <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, but, but about not doing any work and talking to them, yeah, like she would like, let me go from any assignment like i would just work on these books all day in the classroom yeah i feel like if they're if there's worse kids they got to worry about starting fires yeah. and, like, and that one might bring a gun to school we'll pay attention to him this guy's just drawing comics if yeah. we start seeing guns and weird stuff in his comics we'll pay more attention to him but yeah no guns just like airplane crashes and but i i, I realized the power and the beauty of like well, I have no friends, and if I make a comic where like this character goes to uh, a plane trip to Hawaii, I get like the same dopamine and, and excitement of as if I was really going really? myself. Yeah, because I would draw the kid, like I would draw her like packing her bags and like getting breakfast before she goes on the plane, and then like getting on the plane and like thinking about something, and then something happens on the plane. Because when I'm reading your comics, yeah, I'm always like surprised with how not cliche they are. I can never predict where it's going. That's a really nice compliment. No, it's like, I'm like, I'm like, the, I'll read something, I'm like, what the fuck is this coming from? I, like, <laughs> I wouldn't have predicted it, which is what I love. Oh, wow. I'm like, all right, this is happening now. It feels like almost like a, like a, like a real life thing because the normal the normal predictable thing never really does happen it, like, it is all all random something and i'm not it's not like yeah. it's not like random like xd random Ooh, that's the craziest <laughs> thing. it's like huh okay this is going an interesting direction yeah well i don't, I don't that's that's nice to know i worry sometimes it sometimes can be cliche but no uh, your comics are anything but they uh they they're they're taken from a lot of life experience and uh things that are like I can see that. would be funny if they happened and then i just go full extreme with that feeling it. that's what larry david does that's what a yeah, lot of, exactly a lot of people just put what happens to them that's a lot of stand-up yeah all, you just all it's, it's something all happens and then you exaggerate extrapolate on it yeah so you're drawing uh these comics throughout your school what 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 was like your first when you're like i'm doing this or did you like well i kept making them from first grade on and then uh, that was when I lived in Texas. And then my my I was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and they moved to Texas when I was three. And I moved out of Texas when I was ten. Yeah, because you got a real Western flair. Yeah, I don't know. Is it's some deep Texas? subconscious, some deep su subconscious thing of like loving cowboy iconography. I mean, you like it too. Look at this; it's just perfect. Yeah, it's it is sick. It's yeah, the Western like cowboy. It's not even. It's almost coming back. With as, it as, came back and it fell. It became commandeered by the e boys and all of the like the um, the, the music industry and like modeling. Gone? Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a fad that's passed now. But now it, it's like whoever stays on the fad is like the real one now because like all the other people that just jumped on are not doing the cowboy yeah, look anymore. That, what, Lil Nas X blew up on it. That was like the peak of it. What or the, the Kardashians were doing cowgirl stuff too, were like they? Uh, like photo shoots or something. No idea. Yeah, who's that one guy? Orville. Orville Peck. He's he's cool. But I, he's I don't like think legit. He's, a he's, fad. he's still doing it. Yeah, the, he. Uh, there's a really good comic by Simon Hanselman uh, who does yeah. this comic, Megan Mog. I did. love that one. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. I was, when I started seeing you two hanging out, I'm like, oh shit, you're <laughs> like, you're 
do it. You're like in the indie scene. You're like one of the like from my outside perspective because I'm not in comics. Yeah. I'm not paying heavy attention. But Simon and Me- or or Megan Mog. Yeah, is it Megan Mog or Mog and Meg? No, Megan Mog. Oh, okay. I'm always like that's like one of the biggest ones. So it's like, oh, you're like hanging it. It's yeah, like- it's like original Tumblr vir- viral comics, and then yeah, he's he's what he's one of my best friends. He's really been a a, a really amazing person in my life. He bought me these shoes. Nice, but um, so it's like, yeah, you're 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 a big player in the indie comic scene. It's like being a big player in like the garbage man scene. I was, it better feels nice. If, no, it's like, but, you're, but like, you're there's like, like these are the people in the comic book scene are just people that are just keep on making comics and then having no life and then ruining their life. That's that's what I think. That's so many comedians. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. So many. A normal regular life is working at an office, and you're you're like, yeah, my life's still together. It's yeah. more exciting to be like, it's insane to make any mo- money off of like an art. Yeah. It is insane. So and it's, it's so, a lot of anxiety too. Yeah, and it's a lot of like I have to do this mm-hmm. or go get a normal job. Yeah, and then even a normal job, you go insane on those jobs because you're like, I still want to do the. I still I. It's somewhere deep inside of you where you're like, I gotta, I gotta do. I'm not. I'm still me. I still have to make jokes and get uh, those jokes are gonna get me fired and i got to meet hr oh my god so. yeah there's always like the story of like the worst comedian of all time who thinks that he's like uh god's gift to earth and he's just like the most the most rude person at his job sexually assaulting people making fe- people feel bad he's like oh dude i'm just a comedian i've met that guy like a hundred times and then yeah <laughs> and then they're just a bad comedian and then what do they do what what's left for them except suicide i mean you could make money being bad comic are there you don't have to say name we'll save it for the patreon oh oh patreon.com <laughs> if you if you Stop have it is. so you're making indie comics now are you you're you're making money from them you're like succeeding right i pay my i pay my i pay my rent every single month from it but it's Damn, like every it. single two weeks into the month it's like oh this is really getting bad i've never asked my parents for a dime of money ever we're in the exact same situation wow okay yeah but it feels good yeah, being able it's to just like, freedom. Yeah, to be like, I'm on my own schedule. I, it's I've, all on you. I've crafted my life to s- where I say yes to every um, like artistic, whatever job or obligation. Oh, so, so you didn't want to be actually on this podcast. You just said yes. No, no, no. no. This, <laughs> is, this is different. I just love you, Mac. Yeah, because you've been a fan of Cowboy Boys since like the original. Yeah, my roommate Pax Formicella, he showed me Cowboy Boys when I Shout first moved Pac- in with him. Pax? Pax, yeah. Nice. I love you, Pax. He's made it. He's, he's, in, he's, in, uh, he's in Europe right now. He's living his life, finding himself in a five-week journey across Europe. That He paid 43 cents for the plane ticket. How? I don't know how. I think that he's probably doing sexual trafficking of small dogs, probably, to you get think? by and get the money. But... Maybe he's just been lying to me. He has cat skeletons in his house. Why? In his room. We have the same house. Uh, he just, I don't know, man. Why does Jeffrey Dahmer embalm uh, dogs in his basement shed? Because he's a weird, like, weird freak? Yeah. Like, uh, Pax, will, my, my roommate will be like, oh, man, my parents got me the the exoskeleton, man. I wanted, I, wanted the re- I wanted the skeleton with, like, half of the tail still on there with the fur. Like, what the hell? Yeah, you keep an eye on him. Yeah, but he's okay. He's a good egg. But he showed yeah. me. He showed me um, Cowboy Boys and, uh, Those, and that's our fan base. <laughs> yeah, there you guys go. collecting cat skeletons in 2020, <laughs> and, and uh, I was working on comics all the time then. And uh, I, you know, it's nice to listen to something that's genuinely uh, like keeps my mind because you guys would go down crazy hypothetical pathways like sexual robots i liked when you're always talking about i'm like, just talking about what i see yeah you talk about your life <laughs> it felt very earnest and it's not like some kind of podcast where everybody's just trying to be funny it was like a very Whoa. earnest radio show what are you talking about I'm, I'm trying to be funny no but you are funny that's oh, the problem okay, okay. trying <laughs> that's the problem yeah <laughs> but I, I just you were just so 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 funny because I, I remember you're like yeah i'm just getting really fat because it, it went from uh Think seeing the caramel macchiato frappuccino and then thinking I should get that and then getting that every single day or something. That's what you did. I don't even remember that. But that sounds like me. Yeah, I there get, you go. I get into food habits. Food habits are a very real sickness in American life. It's just what it's. You learn to make something easy, like a, a certain type of burrito, and you just make it all the time. Mm-hmm. The repetition, the addiction mm. of repetition. Mm. So. But uh, what was I saying? What was I? We're talking about you in the indie scene. In the well, I was talking about my roommate showed me this show. I don't know. 
oh, okay, I say yes to every artistic obligation, yeah. and so I've crafted my life to where I literally have to be working all the time in order to finish the things so I could finish other things so I can get paid from those things. And yeah. then, because like this, this is a comic I just did, Horn Room 4, and this, yeah. this comic I made uh, to, so that I can make at least $200 in this New York show that I'm, I've come here because on Saturday I'm going to be tabling at this book fair. And a lot of people in New York already have this book because um, it was published here. And For anyone a- watching the video, these are, I don't think these are all of them, but these are like a ton of the comics you've made. You actually do have all of them. Oh, nice. You even have a variant edition of that one there. Oh, are these yeah. rare? People mother- sell them on eBay for two hundred dollars, man. What? That's what this comic's all about, man. This is this is a comic that's not on the internet that you can only get in real life from me, or if you email me. So yeah, we've been I've been um, I've been collecting these. I am not going to sell them until after you're dead. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so I, I need you to sign all these. If it's somebody and- I know, I actually don't really care because if it's like if if I'm the reason that you're going to be making your rent this month, then I would never tell you not to do it. It's these. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like buy 12 of them oh. and then they sell i just see it's like the same backdrop and it's like 120 dollars, and it's like this is this comic's not a rare cultural artifact this came out last year i sold <laughs> it for five dollars and now you're you're selling it for 120 dollars because because what because i don't have enough money to reprint it so it's rare Fuck you and so and so I, I i wrote it a long essay in the back of this one and i said that if you if you're profiting enough of me i hope that you die in cold <laughs> ice and uh i'm profiting off you right now yeah in some way, but it you'll 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 see it's, it's much more it's much more angry i regret it i just wrote it and i didn't read it back and i just printed them hey but that's uh, cool like sometimes you there's so many things i've said on the podcast where i'm like ooh, whoopsie daisy but the the sheer volume of it makes it so it's like people are numb to the shocking well that's things what you, you're saying that's kind of why you gotta keep making stuff and you're like that was me two weeks ago i'm a better person now yes i've yes, learned from yes. my mistakes People We're always, all evolving. What, there's so many cliches in uh, podcasts, and it makes no sense to me because what we're doing right now, this is as old as time. It's just like a radio show. Well, it's as old as radio. I shouldn't say old as time. No, it's like, uh, well, yeah, I guess. But like, they've been broadcasting people talking in, in, in organized ways for years and years, but then... All of these people, they fall into like this cliche of like, well, they'll just like make jokes the whole time about, oh, I hope nobody clips this, but nobody's clipping nothing, man. I'm starting to do clips, but like, but like <laughs> people going out of their way to like make compilations of all the worst things ever said. It's like a podcast is bad news anyway. If you're going in there, you're gonna hear something bad. But I just think it's funny. Everybody talks about it like they've never um, uh, heard of someone else make that same joke you know and here you are in the belly of the beast yeah i've never <laughs> done anything like this ever in my whole life is this your first podcast this is one first one where i've ever been in uh the same room i hate talking over zoom i don't do them yeah. anymore over zoom yeah I, and uh i used to be a part of one with with simon and my my friend josh my old my old roommate josh pettinger is also a cartoonist and it was over instagram live and we kind of started it just so that we could uh me and josh wanted to promote our book so we would just show our books on the camera and t- and talk about them and then it just became this weird thing where it would Josh wanted it to be like uh, NPR and wanted it to be like this amazing podcast of what but I hate podcasts so I don't understand so I so you I have like that. a structured like with segments and like here's the beginning like well, like that kind of stuff or well I just think if you're just talking all, all the time it's just going to be boring for a cartoonist cuz then you're just kind of like wasting your energy gotcha. I think but but uh, stupid thing to talk about look at me right now <laughs> no no let me, uh, shit all over my no i'm really not you I no know. it's not you it, but it's, no i understand like when i do stand up it's uh when it comes to like roast battles huh. people love roast battles yeah and when i see a roast battle i'm like i that's that's the it does seem like a waste of time because you spend all this time writing all these jokes for one specific set yeah and after that set it's done you never get to use those anymore. Mm-hmm. Half the time, like I would say, ninety percent of roast battles on YouTube are just like, "Oh, this stinks. It's mm-hmm. not good." So no, there are like things in your thing. Like you get to say no to a lot of things too. Where you're like, "I don't want to do that. Yeah. That's not. It does it's not. It's not uh, productive for me and what I'm trying to do." Yeah, well, so I get it. You, Josh wanted me to go back. It was, this is a show called Manga Chat, and Josh wanted me to come back on it. And manga? Just, uh, manga. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually. <laughs> I thought um, we were going to start doing r- some Trump rally stuff. No, I'm, I'm actually wearing the. Uh, it was, uh, 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 a fan of comics made a bootleg shirt of the show. And oh, I nice. Wear it all, and I do wear it all the time because it's, it's my only hoodie that's comfortable. 
Uh, this is by a man named John Pasilacqua who made this bootleg. How much is that worth? Six hundred dollars? No, there's only one, there's only one, so they'd have to kill me to oh, get so it, for it to be worth anything. It's worth an infinite amount of money. Mm. Yeah, it's priceless. It's priceless. I don't. Priceless makes it sound like it's not worth worth anything. Like it's at sentimental value. Yeah, yeah. I like saying something is like unlimited. If it's a one of one. Yeah. It's the only one in existence. It goes up in inflation every year of the most money ever possible to own. Exactly. The uh, but about the the, la- the my my last epilogue and my rant about the podcasts are the, is that I do feel like I've been I I've loved stand-up comedy since I was very little because um when I'm drawing is it was just always like a, a beautiful company to have, you know, sometimes listening to music get lonely, but like stand up comedy was always a beautiful thing. Like I loved, uh, uh, when I was little Jim Gaffigan, Jerry Seinfeld's hours, he did, um, um, it's so funny when people, yeah. people are like, ah, oh, my favorite comedian growing up, Richard Pryor. And like, it really like puts someone in an age. Oh, in a generation. Yeah. Cause so that's not mine, like, man. When you're like Jim Gaffigan, I can still like, okay, I know what, like yeah. what you're listening to it as a kid. Yeah, Cause I'm like, like I see thing. new comics and I'm like, that's not how it's done. I'm already like a boomer and my, <laughs> with like who I like and like who my favorites are. I always like Patrice O'Neill, Elephant in the Room, best stand-up special ever. But then young people were like, what? Who's that? Like, Oh, he's great. Patrice O'Neill, Cat Williams, Mitch Hedberg, those are my favorites. I like uh, yeah. the it's like like Gen X comedians are yeah. like my generation. What I listen to, but it is funny like how it just it's always got to be someone. It's just going down the line. Yeah, yeah, it's great. But then I feel like now every stand up comedian has mm-hmm. twenty well, podcasts. Welcome where, to welcome to Boomer Dumb. Yeah, well, where they're, like, they're, they're not fucking... funny though. <laughs> they're just like, and then you see the hours they do, and they're Some just, of them are. they're mid. Well, yeah, but but don't you think that they're they're kind of just like spreading themselves to nothing so thin by doing so many you gotta you gotta make money somehow yeah i guess so so the ones that are not making money and spreading themselves too thin that's the ones where you're like ooh. yeah like maybe like bert crusher or something no yeah call him doing shout outs <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, am make i supposed our, to save my am i supposed to save my truthful opinions for the people that have to pay to hear Nate them Nate is coming for you bert <laughs> yeah i get it um well, he knows it too. You ever see there's a video of a little kid coming up to Bert Kreischer in a Target and he was like, are you a YouTuber? And Bert's like, no, man, I'm a comedian, man. He's like, no, but I feel like I've seen you on YouTube. Like, you, you have a YouTube channel? He's like, no, nah, man, I'm a comic. And then it's like some kind of like dr- dramatic like documentary footage that he thinks is so awesome that it's just like, dude, but you're a YouTuber, man. He's ever he's everything. Yeah. And I don't, I don't hate on him because it's like, oh, man, you've, I don't know how that next level of fame where you do yeah. spread yourself where you have like a team of people. Yeah. It's like, that's, you can't even do it by yourself. Well, you know, it's interesting. It's different. It's different for you because you're, you, you're a real standing up comedian and you have a real podcast and I'm just like a loser cartoonist in my house. No, like but, hating everybody, but you're a real cartoon. You're selling co- uh, comic books. You're, you're paying your rent with it. You're, as real as it gets, and but that's it's only- not that's not like that's not like sh- like showbiz where like I, I I still see everybody that has like any kind of media as like oh you're like some big hotshot movie star Hollywood you know because yeah, I'm that, just sitting in my room you're not Marvel you're not doing Spider Man comic but that's like a thousand people yeah so it's there there is a thing where it is like cooler where you're like oh I'm doing I'm one guy I draw I print I'm I'm like the sole creator and I think people like that I think there's obviously like. Yeah most people like the schlock that marvel puts out i don't even think people do, does anyone read comic books no. from like big dc or marvel comic books anymore this is have the, they abandoned this is the purpose of the modern american comic book right now in comic book stores published by marvel and dc and image the purpose of them is for other people to get mad about them and that's always the publicity it's always the the publicity of like mainstream comics is always like well they made robin gay and then here's a 20 article think about how i'm upset about yeah. it but but it's just because there's like it's whatever controversial they, they, they it's like a uh, hate engagement yeah because like, that's the only way they get attention and um the comics now they've got like three or four to 12 writers working on one 32 page comic and they got like an assembly line process of just hellscape where it's like one guy does the pencils one guy does the inks one guy does the shadows one guy does the color highlights one guy does the lettering which is literally at this point now typing out a font adding bold on certain words you know back in the old days a letterer would 
have to get a, an Ames guide and lay out all of the um, the, the the measurements of uh, of all the speech bubbles in the right spots. You do you, you do all that. Yeah, I draw I draw all my comics by hand on paper. I mean, it's hard to even compare like mainstream comics to like alternative independent comics because they're just like it's just like real people making comics and then like a corporation well, selling bullshit. Yeah, it's just like the normal big movie studio budgets and like a guy just going out and filming and making like a good movie. Yeah. But it is cool. Movies are kind of in the same place as comics in a way cuz the Marvel has taken over movies too. And people are sick of it. Yeah, people are sick so of I'm it. So I'm saying all. like it is it is a great spot to be when you are a soul guy making your thing and more I think more and more people are getting sick of the no, like the big thing so you're like I'm going to look for something like something small and like relatable. Yeah, I, I I hope I hope so that would be very fortunate. I mean like right now I'm I'm, I'm my books I sell to like the same like uh 600 people. And if I can keep doing that for like the till I die in like 2 years that'd be really great. You know. <laughs> That's my plan. Yeah, yeah. Just keep doing this and of course if a big corporation wants to buy this and give me Twenty thousand dollars. I would yeah. sell. And maybe twenty one thousand dollars. <laughs> I would sell out instantly. Yeah, that's like um one of my favorite interviews is with uh, the Black Keys, and then someone was calling them sellouts for like selling their music to be in like Ford commercials. Oh, commercials, or, yeah, yeah. And they're like, yeah, I can keep making music mm-hmm. and doing the art I love, but now I don't have to worry and stress about paying the bills. Yeah, the whole point of making art is so some people are like you sold out and it's like yeah i would love to sell out i would love to sell out in a way where i get to keep doing what i do i think people like you got a bunch of money selling out is almost like when uh the bad way of selling out is like compromising your thing yeah and yeah. you do almost have to make compromise. and throwing I, all the people away that helped you and like saying like Fuck those people yeah i have to like i want to compromise is i have to bleep swear words on the youtube Oh really? Yeah, it's so that it oh. it gets more views, so I can keep like there's there's a little compromise. I didn't but, like, know that was a thing. The algorithm knows if you curse. Mm-hmm. Whoa! <laughs> you just you just made me have to work for thirty seconds. Yeah, well, no, but that's one little block there. <laughs> now I'm gonna bleep everyone individually. Wow. So I didn't know that. That's kind of crazy. It's just, but it's like what do they want like them to just make like te- like the dick cavett show or something like on youtube i think it's just um <sighs> advertisers hate anything controversial so if it's controversial to a small group it, that gets nixed oh, so it's like cigarettes crazy. on tiktok it's not offensive but a group does not want kids seeing that wow. or swearing or something so everything no matter how small the group is that is like you can't show that it all gets censored so it all be the only thing that they allow is like a big the a safe normal mr beast <laughs> style wow. video of nothing nothing offensive and nothing entertaining and i would say your com your comics they're pretty what would I, not they're they're not crass they are they're not disturbing what's like a complimentary they're like they're i think they're both crass and disturbing okay th- <laughs> uh, i'm trying to look for like a weird like i'm like what the f- <laughs> so that's what i'm saying well, what some, do you some- feel when you when you read them really like is it like uh, cuz i you know they're crass and disturbing, but that's like that's all I hear when I show someone. But to me, they're just it's just funny, you know. And like I love it when you, when I show someone a comic and they're just like, "Dude, what kind of drugs were you on?" And you're just like, "Nothing." This is just, just yeah, it's just how I process the world, you it's know. Just what is funny to me. But to answer heroin, I would say. I would say a little too much horse fucking for my taste. Oh, <laughs> see, but I never show penetration of the horse. Very artistic it's, it's choice. Your, it's your own. It's your own conclusions that you're oh, drawing. Oh, so yes, that's yeah. what that says about me. It's on you. That is true. Mm-hmm. I was just reading that last one, and I was like, man, this guy's fucking, but it's not. They were well, I their just, boyfriend and girlfriend. But I, she's a horse. She's she's a horse woman. This is this is Peggy in, in the new book, <laughs> Flippy. Um, uh. Oh I, wait! I was just—I was trying to say—I made that this this little book here to make money at this book fair because most people already have this because this is the newest one that's the best selling, sold a thousand of them. Nice. And I'm not gonna—I don't want to go to a book fair in the middle of Manhattan and sell a book that a thousand people probably already have that would even go to a comic book fair. Yeah. Like there's a small amount of people that would go is, to that, and they probably they, already have it. Are comic book fans? Are they like a ravenous bunch? Are they? That are, Oh, they, I don't even know. There, a, there's like four categories. There's because like, I'm on the outlier. Yeah, where I'm like, oh, I like, I like comics, but I, I don't, I, I don't have enough time to yeah. like dive into another like niche. 
Yeah, there's like four hobby. categories of like the indie alternative Careful. comic fan. These are the people who buy your comics. I know. Some I love of them, them all. Some of them. Oh, that, <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for looking out for my well being here. <laughs> but yeah, but there's four there's, categories. There's like there's like daddy category. Daddy category is like this is a guy who maybe he is um he's lucky enough to where he has a really good career and he just loves like comics that aren't mainstream comics. So he'll always yeah. uh, this is a this is a reader who cares about the well-being of the person making it because they know that they don't have a job and they buy every comic and they buy um, original so, art. These are people that buy pages. These are beautiful people. I love these people. That's a little bit of me. I, I subscribe to your Patreon. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just like a, I'm like a stepdad. That is I'm exactly like, stepdad. Like, send me some comics whenever you make them. Yeah. I like what you're doing. I need This, this book was also made to send because I haven't sent anything out to them in, in a long time because I've been busy finishing this. This, this. this one here took me one year to make and then what are the other fans and uh, and then there's like there's like guy there's like guy who uh, gets really mad when you take one extra week to ship a book where it's like <laughs> hey hey just checking in so the autistic yeah, comic book yeah. fan they're like ordered my book on Christmas where the f*** is it at on email sent from my iPhone like that's like what it says on the email <laughs> and then it's like, cause I'm one guy doing this. I got to make the comic. I got to ship the comic yeah. and I'm not complaining. It's just like, but it's not going to be done in three days. And sometimes it takes longer than I'd like it to, but it's never on purpose. And then they get really upset. That's another guy. When they see category. you, when they see you on your, uh, cause you have a band attack dog. Yeah, it's true. So when they see you like performing with your band, they're like, why are you drawing right now? Yep. What the hell? Doing another thing. Yeah. That's like evil daddy. All right. Cause they're, 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 there had like because I did go on tour and then that's when all I got all these emails from these people like, hey like did you ever send my book out like where the f is it and I used to tell them it's like I well I didn't get the I didn't get these books until after Christmas to oh, mail to me you from, even still have to there's a whole production line yeah well it's just like this was published by my dear friend Austin English from Domino Books and he uh, paid for the printing and and shipped out half of them and then I got half of them to sell myself and I put them up for sale. Uh, through me and then uh, I had to wait till after Christmas for them to arrive because I didn't want 500 books being sent to me at, like during the holidays and then I lose 500 books that I could be selling I had to refund everybody yeah. and so um, so they just got back to me uh, as soon as I got back from tour in the second week of January they're coming yeah they're, they're coming they're, they're probably watching this being like he's doing a podcast right now yeah I put not them for sale after Christmas not, like, what the hell man not mailing my books alright what are the other two fans uh, I, 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 can, I can't even say them I, I would can't say, even say them oh you can't they're just no. weird, real weirdos I would say other com people who want to get into comics oh like yeah the, there's the yeah there's the iPad guy iPad guy's like man like what kind of brushes do you what kind of brushes on photoshop do you use for that it's like a crazy color texture because you you're drawing these in pencil yeah this this is the, the covers are like usually paintings or like drawings that i color like by hand or on photoshop but like they're just like whoa how'd you get that ink brush line i don't have that on my procreate there's the ipad guy he's like oh i always wish i could do that man but you totally can get some computer paper you know what is computer paper like uh like printer paper make a comic on printer paper like instead of like, because they're like, oh, I oh, always wish mean, I could draw by hand. It's like, but you can. Yeah, if you're doing it on an iPad, you might, you could, and just scan it. In. There's something about. Yeah. Do you look down on digital art like yeah. that? Okay. Damn. Very much so. Super elitist. Props. <laughs> 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 well, I do. I do in the sense of like for for narrative comic storytelling, I think that it it really takes away from the heart of takes any. Like I don't give a f <laughs> like. It'll be hard to read. They're just hard to care about. I think. Yeah, there's no soul. Yeah, maybe that, that, that sounds really pretentious, but yeah, but I you're just, you're an indie comic guy. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I just think it's stupid because like they're they're like anybody can get this look, you know, like if they're using the same program. But like the way that someone even holds a pencil makes the drawing style different than another guy holding a pencil. Oh, yeah. You know, so I, it takes away it takes away a certain level of beauty and heart that like I would like to. S I'm not going to spend my time reading a comic drawn on an iPad. I'm you sorry. You got a pencil on you, sure dude. A real. Uh, the way I uh, people would make fun of me the way I held pencils in school. Oh, me too. I hold them like this. Do we hold a pencil the same style? No way. Yeah, I think it was like that. Okay, you do I, you do the triple finger. I do. Uh, this is how I hold. And it. I remember, like, I remember teachers. That. You do a full. I think I did when I was younger. Gives me the most control. 
but like I remember people would uh be like, why are you hold? It'd be like a uh, the hot girl in class be like, <laughs> just as loud as she can. The why do you hold a, a pencil weird? And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no one taught me. No one taught me how to hold a pencil. Yeah, they used to put a uh, rubber band and cotton balls on my hand so I could hold a pencil like a normal human. See, I can't even. Really? I can't even make the shape with my hand of what it's supposed to be because I was so twisted in my anatomical. Uh, practices so i think yeah because my hand was like that i would just get smudges on my pinky Mm -hmm. all the time yeah whatever i don't have any smudges Mm. on right now i guess i got i got like one but i haven't been drawing in the past three days i haven't i haven't slept in the past don't say that the people are gonna be mad oh yeah that's right well no they're mad i'm not shipping them out (laughs) (laughs) Uh, because i had to finish this book and uh and then I, i haven't so i'm just i'm completely burned out from from drawing right now that makes sense um how many so what is we'll, we'll finish this off how many what are what is there like a main series is like alonzo sneak the main bread and butter or do you just do whatever you want no these are all this is all the same series here this is alonzo what do you like call the entire cowboys is there like a, a name just alonzo sneak yeah alonzo sneak and i never liked that because i wish i could come up with something cooler because it's like the the uh, I, I, I love peanuts you know charlie brown comics but like the comic series isn't called Charlie Brown. It's called Peanuts. Yeah. So I always wish I had something funny like that. But I just come up with different names from like this one's called Flippy. That one's Plum Pocket. There's Muscle Horse. There's uh, yeah, Muscle Horse is a good one. Oh, thanks. That's yes. one of my favorites. Progy uh, Sex. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, where can if people want to look at your comics, where plug all your stuff? Where's like the best place to follow you, buy comics, look into everything you want to do. You got a um, website for yeah, starters? Yeah, so I have uh, I post a lot of my comics for free on Instagram, like in, in swipe comic form, which is the new web comic yeah, uh, format I've, right now. And you so can if you get just want to read these and not own them, that's yeah, on if you Instagram. want to be a cheap a cheap uh, a cheapskate. <laughs> yeah. Follow Nate. Nate Garcia's cartoons on Instagram. And then I post um uh the and anytime there's a new book except for that horner issue four you'll have to email me for that one because there's a lot of people i don't want to have that oh. um mostly because it can it includes comics that i've done for publications and anthologies that uh wouldn't appreciate that i'm republishing them but a lot of these magazines don't necessarily pay for the work so oh. I've uh, I've I've commandeered my own material. You're pirating your own material. I'm pirating. Uh, uh, this is a bootleg comic of my own comics that have not been published yet. In nice. in most, because a lot of these things they come out like whenever they come out. So like, uh, if you want that, you can email me, and then. Uh, Where do they find your email on your website? Yeah, Nate Garcia's cartoons at gmail dot com, and then I have a store where I sell them all. Uh, if they're in print, what's the store? eBay dot com. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but no, no. Is all, are all your links just on your social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and they'll find them there. Nate Garcia dot Big Cartel dot com. But most of them are sold out now. So I guess if you fucking want one, go to eBay. And Dude, I'm gonna I'll just the, go die in a ditch. I'm gonna sell this whole sign stack for a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, just put a huge price. Hey, tag. well, if hey, if you do that, well, hey, cut, cut me a couple. Oh, thousand. absolutely. I would if if, yeah. if I could just scam some weirdo who's like, oh, these are rare. Yeah, trying to. It's probably. I believe it's like a lot of flippers. Like Definitely, the people who buy like ooh Pokemon cards that don't actually like it, and then they just try and flip it. I mean, in a way, it's beautiful. I mean, honestly, if I'm honest, I do talk a lot about the scarcity because it's like, or, or about the um, eBay people. Because first of all, it pisses me off in a kind of irrational way because I'm not making the money. Yeah, but you're like. And also because they're not really rare that much. Like they just, they've come out in the past two years and then they go out of print because I can't afford to pay for the new ones. But also, do you sell the files? Yeah, I have the files. I can make them any time. It just costs a lot of money. It's like seven books at this point. Once you start hitting a, uh, hitting a, like big, you could do a big reprint of everything or an anthology book. That'd be cool. Yeah. There's some, uh, there'll be a hardcover book in the future, but um, I don't know when. But, but, oh, I was going to say, talking about it a lot. It incentivizes the readers to then buy the brand new thing when it comes out, because then they're not going to get it when it, after it's out, man. They'll have to pay up for eBay. So it's kind of a sick, twisted publicity scam. The way I talk about That's this a lot stuff. of things. Get yeah. it, get it, support it now, or you're gonna have to pay more from some guy who still has it. Yeah, I'm just trying to get as much people to buy them when they come out as possible. And if you bought a comic and you read the comic, thank you, and I really do love you. Yeah. Um. I got anything else to plug? 
Cowboyboys.com. No, we don't have Cowboyboys.com. Oh, Cowboy boy, uh, <laughs> Cowboyboys.blowjob.com. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's uh, Cowboyboys.rodeo, Patreon.com for Cowboyboys. You, you're going to do another Patreon episode? Well, yeah, I have to say all the things I held back oh, on. Okay, if you want to hear more, subscribe to our Patreon. Subscribe to Nate's Patreon. Yes, uh, yes, that's true. That's just so my you, name, Nate wanna, Garcia. If you want to support him, uh, thank you for being on. And if you stick around for the Patreon episode, we're going to find out, did Courtney Love really kill Kurt Cobain? I don't think she did. Tune in. I flip-flopped. I know the answer. Oh, but you'll okay. Have to, you'll have to. We'll, we'll discuss. All right. Yeehaw. Yeehaw.